Welcome back, buckaroos, and everybody that is joining me back from either my Instagram, my TikTok, or whatever else you watch me on. If you found me on YouTube, amazing. I like you better than everybody else that follows me. I'm just kidding. Or am I? So I want to I wanna address how is everyone doing, you know? Leave me a comment down below. Are you having a, a lonely Saturday? Or is it a lonely Sunday? Anyway, how are you doing? You know, leave a comment down below. Uh, I'm just curious about how everyone's been doing. I know I've been doing quite terrible. Can I get a mental health check? Anyway, can we get a... Can we, before we move on to anything and I... Before I highlight the piece behind me that we got going on back here, a nice prized possession of mine. Can we get a nice hair check? We all know what we do. Um, I've been growing it out, you know, it's looking quite good. It's quite long right now. Let's mention the piece behind me. We got the Healy Emil blazer from behind me. It is from 2018. It is a size 43. It fits me quite perfect, actually. I'm gonna end up selling this piece, actually. Um, it is not something I do see myself wearing quite often because it doesn't really fit me. But hey, it looks great. It looks sexy. I mean, look how it looks on me. I think I'll look good in it for sure. If I got any bigger than I already am, because I am a thick boy, that bad boy will bust. What are we going to be talking about today? Today, we're going to be talking about accessories, um, essential accessories for your wardrobe or things that I think, in my opinion, which is very valid because of my name, fashion elitist, but pretty much my opinion is factual. I just want to get that across. Essential accessories for everyone's wardrobe that I will contest to. I will argue about it. I will try and give you some facts about why you need these essential accessories in your wardrobe. And I'll be giving a few options of items and reasons, uh, my thought process, what comes in through my big brain of mine. I went out to LA and I did a bunch of interviews asking one simple question. What is the most essential accessory that everyone needs? So let's go ahead and roll those clips of me being cringy. So <laughs> we're here at Good Fight. So the question we have today, what I'm asking is, what is an essential piece of it, like an accessory that you think that everyone should have? An accessory I think everyone should have is probably like some kind of shoulder bag or like small satchel of some sort. Cause wherever you go, I feel like you always could use a little extra help carrying things, you know. Like I'm here with here with uh, Nate here. So the first question is from essential accessories. What do you feel like people need to have, like a need? Okay, essential accessories. Oh, definitely. Uh, number one would have to be bags. Having like an extra bag, you know, like maybe a sling bag. I always care. I like to carry um, a capital capital country uh, sling bag. That's a good choice. One of those. Now we're back. So I'm glad we're back from those interviews. It is quite a fun time. Thanks for everyone that had, um, you know, allowed me to interview them. I had a few people that weren't interested in doing it, but uh, only one person, and you know who you are. But. Uh, from what we saw from the interviews, we usually had the same answer. I only got to I only got to interview a few people. I didn't really get to interview a bunch of people just because it was a bit difficult. And, you know, I don't really go out. Uh, I kind of stay home a lot um, because I have no friends. So from the interviews I got were bags are the most essential accessory um, for the most part. Now, the other accessory I do want to wrangle that in, you know, hog tied together I would say would be also belts. Belts are another essential accessory that I believe everyone should use and need and needs like a good belt that um, is that fits into their wardrobe, fits for, you know, a lot of different types of styles and subgenres of fashions or subcultures, whatever you like to call them. There's a lot of different types of belts to get yourself into, but I feel like a lot of people definitely do need a good essential belt. And I'm gonna be tackling the first thing which would be bags before i get into the belt situation but there's four variants of bags and the first is going to be messenger bags tote bags then we got our backpacks and then last but not least we got our shoulder bags or fanny packs whatever you'd like to call them and they all have a specific purpose you know i think a, an example like would be backpacks aren't really an essential accessory it's more of like it, it there's a time and a place for it and 
with those we only want to use them when we go to school you know there's no really reason for us to be carrying a backpack because we don't have that much stuff to carry around unless you're the type of guy that has a bunch of random things that they need to carry around like a camera uh their laptops their skimmers your rick owen ramones that you want to you know flex on everybody with whatever they might be i think that would be only a reason why you'd be carrying a backpack around so we're going to take that one off the list so our three accessories we would want to focus on are going to be tote bags messenger bags and last but not least our shoulder bags slash uh fanny packs or i don't know what to call them but you know what i mean by that those and of course they're small and compact or they could be big like messenger bags where you can carry your laptop and all this other junk in it and feel a little bit more secure with tote bags me carrying my my laptop in there and stuff it's too flimsy for that a tote bag is more used for like um you know what do, what do most people carry in their tote bags like the laws of power uh the art of seduction our sketchbooks our saint laurent condoms um, I don't like carrying my phone and wallet into my pockets because it doesn't really feel too secure. But when I put it in my tote bags or my messenger bag or even my um, fanny pack or whatever you want to call it, it feels a bit more secure just because it's, you know, on my back and it's somewhere where I can see it in instead of like, it doesn't feel like anyone can pickpocket me, but who really pickpockets in LA? I don't think anyone really does that. No one gets close to me. Um, everyone's pretty far away, and that's probably why I don't have any friends. My main point is it's more secure in the bag compared to your, your pocket because if you sit down, um, sometimes pockets flare out and it, it can come out. I know it's happened to a few of my friends. They've lost their wallets, and people have just completely taken all the money from their accounts and stuff, and we really don't want that because we are, we're all broke here. We're all into fashion. We all get really broke from buying a bunch of smelly Japanese clothing or whatever you purchase from, you know, Grill, Depop, eBay, Yahoo, you name it, you buy from it, you're broke. The thing is, they're a bit more secure. Now, of course, um, bags can get quite pricey you know it all depends on what you're going for if you're going for more tech wear that is going to cost you a pretty penny but my thing is uh i wouldn't spend too much money on a, buying yourself a bag that you're going to be using on a day-to-day -day. i would invest in a good quality bag but nothing that's going to break the bank like one of those bottega veneta bags which are super awesome just like the texture and everything on them like they look they look amazing like who wouldn't want this bag? I I mean I want it. If you guys want to sponsor me, like go ahead and send me a book like a bag, like I'd appreciate it a lot. Or who needs an Isemiyaki messenger bag, the pleated messenger bag? It looks amazing. I own one. I got one for cheap, but not everyone's as lucky as I am, of course, because I do be bulling around a lot and I do know how to haggle. I can make a video about that if people really want me to, um, but I will try and get to that. You know, I will try and get to that. But those are the main things on like why I think bags are quite essential. Now, you may be asking yourself, those are great points. You know, you want to carry stuff around. You want to be, you know, less, you don't want to be sagging with all those like accessories and pieces that you have, you know. For me, I do carry around my camera. Um, this is a new camera, so hopefully the quality looks a lot better and I look nice and sexy belts okay so i had slightly discussed bags and i think i put out a good point out there you know everyone needs a bag it's something that we kind of need to live and just carry around stuff with us especially if you're shopping for groceries or whatever you know you got your bag going on but let's talk about belt sometimes you want to tuck in your you know your shirt into your pants and you don't got a belt no more but the belt adds some you know it helps keep everything in place kind of thing and there's two specific types of belts there are thin belts thinner belts and then there's the bigger belts the i would call them the the, the chode belts i'll say they change they change proportions a bit in terms of how it looks on your body and what it does so with the slimmer belts it gives you more of a slimming effect while with the thicker belts it gives you a more bulky effect around the waistline and or uh with the slimmer belts um obviously makes you more slimmer just because there's less surface area covering the body but i will be making a video talking about that later but i am a quite thick guy but with the the slim belts i look skinny you know it gives me that hourglass figure and i think it doesn't it doesn't look bad you know I, I like the slim belts but if you if you like your thick belts um go ahead and check out 
Pavel. Pavel sent me um, about five belts, and I, there is some variants. So we got the thicker belts, and then we got the thinner belts. And I love every one of them. Now, this isn't a sponsored video or anything. Um, this is all completely free will. It's not like anyone's behind me holding or looking at me, telling me to say this. Uh, I promise. The thing is, these belts are really amazing. I owned one of the belts for about like six, seven months when I went out to Portland. Um, I actually found them from um, this place called Matches out there. And I bought one of the belts and I, I wear it every day because it's a belt that I, um, like I mentioned, essential belt. It's an essential belt. I use it all the time. And usually over time, it wears out. You know, belts wear out because they're crappy and they crack. You know, they get that cracking effect to them. It looks, it looks super ugly and worn out and you want to get a new belt. But I spent about... 90 ish dollars on this belt. I know it's quite steep, you know, for a belt, but to be honest, it's a really great price for something that's handmade in Portland, just supporting a small business. But there is some detail to the belts and um, the ad personality, stuff like that, which I will talk about actually, you know, and that segues into one specific interview answer that I got, which was from them. So let's go ahead and watch that. I think like people who have like a really personal piece of jewelry on, like, that almost feels like a need because it's like something that's like a safety blanket. It says so much about like your history or your relationships or like who you are. And um, yeah, I feel like that's kind of like something that's gonna, yeah, that's kind of a need. That's actually an interesting oh. answer too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree too. You know, it gives you more personality. Yeah. It definitely is like something if you see someone wearing specific type of jewelry, kind of gives you an in-depth idea of who they are. Yeah, it says so person. much about like who you are, where you come from, like the things that you value, you know, like it could be like a lucky number for you. It could be like a family heirloom. It's like, you know, I have pieces like my friends make and those are the things that like are really special to me or I have things that are passed down from my grandma and it's just, Every, those are every day. I need to have them. I don't even feel like myself if I'm not wearing them. <laughs> really interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So we are back from that interview and what a great and wholesome answer. You know, it's such a good answer and it actually kind of stuck with me because I agree um, in a sense of it being essential to actually dis display your personality. It is essential to display your personality through the pieces you own. Um, they give a great answer and with a great answer comes some great thought right bags and belts you know we have our essential pieces but like they mentioned there are things that create that either have um meaning to it deeper meaning like it came from a relative or something like that where it displays a personality right now, with a lot of essential pieces, it usually runs under the realm of minimalism. And with minimalism, there isn't much personality behind it. It expresses who you are as an individual. And with bags and belts, you can do the same thing. I talked about essential bags that you need to buy that are quite, um, I'll say, interchangeable with any wardrobe, right? And those are the minimalistic bags. Now, there's bags that have actual personality behind them, and those are the items that are gonna very much push you away from the crowd in terms of who you are as a person and not really fit into the specifics of the trendiness behind you know the pieces that you might be wearing right so we have our punk bags we have our tech wear bags we have our um avant bags we have a bunch of different types of bags that we can get into same with belts you know we got the elix belts that's pretty much all i'm coming up with but i'm sure i'll have a little pop-ups over here of different types of belts that have some personality to them but with these things right it creates more dimension with your outfits it creates more layering pieces to the outfits and it also creates a personality slash self-expression and that is our main thing that we want to provide with our outfits right we want to perform self-expression of who you are as a person and what you um, represent i'm gonna go on a little rant here the thing is a lot of the times we see these punk aesthetics or you know grunge aesthetic or whatever my personal opinion is that it very much destroys the actual culture behind why people are wearing certain items right now with punk culture and grunge culture there is actual history behind why people wore that even hippie like even the hippies there's like a specific culture behind it and the thing is sheen and like all these fast fashion companies 
just grab the uh, culture, change it into an aesthetic, and it no longer becomes that actual self-expression moment. You know what I mean? And in a way, whenever anyone says, this is my aesthetic or whatever, there isn't really any thought behind why they're wearing the items. It's only because they liked how it looked. Now, is there anything wrong with that? No. But when you're turning something of culture into an aesthetic, you know, it's no longer authentic. The same thing goes with kind of like tabbies, you know, I'm going to throw that in. Tabbies, you know, this is my opinion on tabbies. I don't really care about them. I wouldn't wear, I wouldn't spend my money on them, but if I was gifted them, I would wear them. Consumer psychology, even those elusive items create more um, hype around them where it's like, now I want them more because less people have them or less people like them because there is that hatred towards them and they're not mainstream where everyone likes them. Less inclusive, more exclusive, if that makes sense. Now, with tabbies, um, I had this conversation with somebody a while back. It seems very unauthentic to me because it's like, you're only like, do you only like it because it's exclusive and only certain types of people like it? Or is it because you actually enjoy the item and the history behind tabbies? That is a question only one can answer. I cannot answer that for other people, but regardless of the answer, it always comes off as very unauthentic because it's like, maybe you were influenced by it not being very popular, or maybe you were influenced by it being very exclusive to a particular party. And I think it's a very interesting conversation to hear what people got to say about that, but that is just solely my opinion. You know, once again, does it really matter? Does my opinion matter on that? I'm going to say no, but... I like to hear other people's thoughts and their ideas about that, but go ahead and leave a comment for me. You know, I, I would love to, to read some of the comments. Um, I would appreciate everybody doing that. Besides bags and belts, like really playing a role into our way of dress and maybe even upscaling pieces and also, uh, you know, very coming together, you know, it's like a, a bow tie. It kind of like ties everything together. It adds a, adds a chef's kiss, you know, on top of like all the items. And of course, they can be used as accent pieces, it could be used as a, another layering piece, even texture, you know? Um, other than that, I do want to talk about where I've been, right? Uh, I feel like people deserve an answer. I know I had mentioned I would I'd be like posting videos weekly and or every two weeks, but right now, as of in this moment, I do get, I do have depression, and that kind of plays a really huge part in like a lot of the things that I'm doing. I do my best to try and handle as much as I can, but sometimes it does get very difficult for me to make videos and or even feel the urge to film anything. Most of the time I uh, <laughs> film videos out of pure rage because it angers me um, what's really devolving in the sense of fashion in social media and force of people pushing their fast fashion and their really misinformed ideas of actual genres of of dress it gets quite frustrating because you know google's a click away one click away we see color combos but then there's color theory something that would help people there's uh, a lot of overconsumption, and there is you know timeless wardrobes you know the list goes on it's just there is a lot of bad and very little good in the community that I've been seeing on social media. And uh, unfortunately, I'm the only depressed fashion guy that is doing something about that currently that I know of. But I will do my best. You know, I, you know, every day I wake up in the morning and I'm just, wow, I am awake once again. But as of right now, um, I'm going to do my best to try and film stuff. But depression does make everything a lot harder. The thing is, as long as you consume in my in my stuff and you enjoy what I'm doing, I appreciate you. But, you know, in terms of um, the future, you know, I got a lot of things in store, but my main priority is not YouTube. I know, oh man. YouTube does not, the YouTube landscape does not bring me in um, money to support myself. Instagram is actually the place that is actually bringing me money. For the rumor, I hear people asking me, you know, like, oh, you make money on TikTok, don't you? No, I don't. I make no money, zero anything. I absolutely get no, no money, no women, no clothing. I get nothing from it. In terms of money making and like actually being able to support myself on there, it's a, a big fat no. Uh, but for right now, 
Instagram is going to be my main priority in making reels and other junk. Ugh, it's so terrible even me saying this, but yeah, unfortunately that's kind of how it is. And until I find it being stable enough for me to continue, like actually continuously making YouTube videos, like if I hit like five, 50, 50,000 subs on on YouTube, like I would be willing to make like content continuously. Like I will be trying, I would try and be like focusing on you know this because it's like something that i could see the light in right but there's too much darkness on youtube in terms of like me even getting anywhere and i'm only doing it for fun to be honest instagram is going to be my main priority so if you want to catch me on there you can catch my content on there i'll be trying to put out a lot of stuff on there but again if youtube becomes a place where i it becomes inviting you know open hug like hey jq you're you're doing good stuff on here look, look at you you're at 50k I will start making YouTube videos more often, but as of right now, I will only do it when I actually feel the urge to and where I actually feel happy. Cause unfortunately, depression sucks the life and energy out of me to actually edit and create long, like very long content. Um, in terms of it booming, I don't see Metro booming. I don't see myself getting anywhere with YouTube unless I make a um, following elsewhere. We all know the landscape of YouTube. That's just kind of how it is. But thanks for, you know, listening to my little, my two rants that I had to give. And I just want to give a small update on kind of my life and what's going on. You know what, buckos? We got to, we got to just saddle in and get ready to ride because it's quite a long journey for us getting into fashion and continuing to move forward. So I hope to see y'all around and um, just subscribe and leave some comments about, you know, the things that I had asked prior and I will try and engage, but catch me on my discord or even on instagram um you know that's where i mostly will be you know stick around with me i will continue to try and grow with everybody and you know thanks to all and everyone that's just supporting me and i appreciate every one of you so until next time you know every day i wake up in the morning and i'm just wow i am awake once again <sighs> it does get very difficult for me to <laughs> feel any sense of happiness unless I buy clothes and I consume in clothing or I sell my old wardrobe off and make a whole new wardrobe with a new haul of clothes that actually makes me happy guess what I can do with my iPhone I can you know look at just know upstairs uh, I'm going hard bing bong